A few years ago, Deborah Krabé Wietzes published a must read on the next level of customer experience design. The book title? Sex Sells, spelled C E X. To celebrate the presentation of the book, Deborah invited senior executives to a special place she rented. Jap Jum, a former prestigious high end brothel. For many in the room, that certainly was a next level experience. Deborah is currently the director of customer experience at ABN Embro. We're honored to have her on our stage, not just because of her strong vision, but also because banking is a couple of years ahead of insurance, so there's a lot that we can learn from. Please welcome on stage, Deborah Karbevitsis. So, we're going to talk about sex, but unfortunately with a C today, so uh, sorry about that. If, anybody, if any of you had any other... Uh, ideas about this today, you can still leave, but I can assure you the next 20 minutes will be quite inspiring, uh, also when we talk about this kind of sex. Uh, as you already saw in the introduction, uh, I don't work for an insurer, so I think I might be one of the few here today who work for another kind of company, I work for ABN AMRO, uh, but I wrote a book about customer experience and I collected lots of cases. To give you an idea, over 50 cases with companies that do something great in the field of custom experience. And of course, I don't have time today to go through all of them one by one, but if you're interested, just read the book. Uh, it's called Sex Sells. I wrote it together with a former colleague of mine. There are two versions, both with different cases, one in Dutch and one in English, so for sure there's one you can enjoy. So who am I then? Well, as I already uh, explained, I wrote two books about custom experience. And today I work for ABN Emro, and I'm there responsible for the customer experience of all our clients. So every day I wake up to see what can I improve to make sure that the lives of our customers or prospects get better. And of course I do that with a whole team, I cannot do that by only by myself. For those of you who don't know ABN Emro, it's one of the biggest banks in the Netherlands. Uh, about one out, out of every five customers has an account at ABN Emro. Uh, we're the number one player for private banking, uh, market leader in mortgages. So we're quite a tall bank. And in our strategy, we focus on three pillars. A future-proof bank, which of course has to do with the people that work for ABN Emro. I will also give some examples on uh, that later on. Sustainability. So I was very much inspired by the previous uh, talk, what we already can do in that field. We focus a lot on how we can make our own business more sustainable, but also how we can accelerate the sustainability shift for our, cu for our customers. And, of course, one thing I'm very proud of, customer experience is in the heart of our strategy. So I get a lot of focus, everybody's asking about the NPS, the Net Promoter Score, how are we performing, what can we improve? So I'm very happy to work for a company like that. So, as said, I cannot go through all the cases, but what I will do today is we'll share with you the most important takeout of when you go through all those cases in the book. And actually, there are four things I would like you all to, uh, to remember and also to apply to your own business. First of all, dare to stand out. How can you really make a difference? How to create individual customer journeys using all the data we have available today? How do we use all the technology that is available and that is rep so rapidly evolving? How can we ensure that we use that to create better experiences? And last but definitely not least, how do we make sure that all the employees we have, that are, yeah, how can we make sure that we use them to the maximum to improve that experience? So first of all, dare to stand out. And the big marketing guru already once said, uh, Philip Kotler said, if you're not a brand, you're a commodity. And, well, probably you recognize that. It's quite hard to distingu distinguish yourself solely based on the products or the services you have. You need to stand out in a different way because, yeah, why should a, p a person choose your company on top of another one? And a little bit of theory to explain that. I hope this is not a completely new picture. Here you see a customer journey with all kind of touch points a customer has with your brand in time. And some of these moments may have big impact, some moments might have small impact or non impact at all, no impact at all. But you can question yourself how do I play with these moments? Is it just a standard moment with limited impact? And, well, is it just okay? Or can I maybe improve the impact? Is it a high impact moment and should I focus on that one? And what I personally especially like, 
What are the branded moments? What are the touch points that I have with my customer that I can really make them feel, okay, I have to do with this company. And it's completely different than I would have the same journey with another company. So ask yourself, what are the branded moments for your company and how can you make a difference there? And what I see happening is that a lot of companies are automatically focusing on the, mo the moments of truth, the moments that matter most. Uh, well, working for an insurance company, you probably think it's the claiming moments because every, every month or every year you pay a certain amount and you only pay that because when you have some claim, you want to get the money back. So that's the moment of truth. But the thing is, it's the same in the whole industry. So everybody is focusing on the same moments. So it's quite tough to stand out there. So look for moments that are different, that are uh, um, well only relevant maybe for your brand. And to give you an example on that, uh, Brussels Airlines, completely different industry again, they were quite dealing with a lot of competitors, a lot of low-cost carriers, Ryanair, EasyJets of these worlds. So they thought, how can we stand out? And they thought, well, we're Belgium, and we're proud of that. And the thing is, with Belgium, it's not really one country. Well, it is a country, but you have the people, uh, Flame and Wallonian, uh, you have even two languages in one country, so they don't feel that strongly connected. And they created what they call the Belgitude, an attitude for Belgian people. So they said, they felt, we are proud to be Belgium, and we want to make sure that people are proud of that as well, and they feel that when they fly with us. So they thought, they don't think about making sure that they have the best price. Of course, they also make sure that they have a good experience by when you buy the tickets and when you get on board. But where they really stand out is that they thought about this brand that they have in being Belgium. So they thought about Belgium's beer, Belgian beers they need to have on board. Uh, they have planes like this, where you have Tintin, one of the cartoons they're very proud of. They also have one with the Smurfs. Uh, they have a totally, or they had, they don't have it anymore, a totally red when they flew their uh, soccer team, the Red Devils. So they really thought about how can we make people proud to be Belgium, uh, Belgium chocolate on board. So they thought about different contact moments where they can really make this difference. Well, talking about Belgium chocolates, it's a small step to Tony Chocolonely, who also thought, how can we stand out? They do a lot of things different. They keep on telling their story about being fair, making sure the whole world will be one day, hopefully, slave-free. And one of the things, small things maybe, that I like so much is that they make it really concrete what they stand for. If you open the bar, the, pair, the, the, the blocks are not evenly distributed. Because they say, in the world, it is unfair. It is not fairly shared within, between everybody. So we make that very tangible by having these weird pieces. To be honest, if you really want to share it, it's quite tough. Uh, you always get... A, uh, get a troubles with that, but I like the fact that they've thought about it that way. So working for ABN AMRO, I always try to look for how, how can we make a difference then? Where do we stand for? And maybe if you live in the Netherlands, you've noticed it that we uh, repositioned ourselves recently, really focusing on a new brand or a, a strong uh, repositioning of the brand, focusing on for every beginning. We really want to be there for people that want to move forward, to want to yeah, get the most out of their lives. And we have the expertise to get you there, to make, you, yeah, make, you, make it available for you to make that step. So one of the things we thought about, how can we make sure that people experience that in every contact they have? And this, I'm sure you cannot read it and it's in Dutch, but to give you an example, this is a one-pager that everybody within our customer care center has, where it says, okay, this is the kind of experience we would like to achieve. And this is very practical for the different steps in a call. So how do you open? What do you say when you, when you uh, answer the phone? How do you make sure during the meeting that you are looking for, okay, what does this customer want to achieve? What do, how does he want to move forward? What can we do to, to get there? And also the end. How do we make sure we make a personal ending show on our expertise? So this way, we make sure that every customer has the same branded experience when they contact the contact center. The second thing I would like to address is data and how to use that to get individual data-driven journeys. So we already talked about the standard moments and if you add more impact or whenever there's more impact, you will get moment of truth. If you add the brand to that, you will get a branded moment, but ideally you have 
branded individual moments for every customer, a journey that is relevant to that customer based on your brand promise. So personally, and I'm not ashamed of it, or maybe a little bit, I like Bridgeton, and I've watched every uh, part of it. So when the new season came out, of course, Netflix showed me, you want to see this. They have a lot of data, and they do all these suggestions, what you like, so all these things were suggested to me. That already feels quite personal, but they have so many data, they could make it even more personal. So I'm not sure whether you ever noticed it, but the way I see the uh, Bridgeton uh, uh, announcement is different than you will see it, or you will see it, or you will see it, because based on my profile, based on the data they have of me, they have all these different thumbnails, and you get to see something which they think will make you want to look at it. So it's even one step further, really making it personal. Another example, Unilever. They also try to create individual journeys. They have this platform, it's called All Things About Hair, All Things Hair. It's a YouTube channel in the, in the United States, and they use data of Google. Where do people look for? What kind of hair issues are there today? And you can imagine whenever there's, for example, an Oscar show, and somebody is dressed well and her hair is special, everybody immediately starts looking, okay, how do I get my hair exactly as that actress? And they, all, they use all the data to make sure when you go to their platform, the first thing you see is on how to get that hair like that. So they make clever use to make sure you see the content that is relevant for your needs, and they even take into account the kind of cultural difference that are, of course, in a big country like the US, there are quite some, uh, to make it as personal as possible. Nutricia is also a nice example. Of course, they have a lot of solutions once you become a mother, but they started this mother journey before that, way before that. The moment you already start thinking about becoming pregnant, they already have solutions for you and tips and information, and they want you to download the app so you get all this relevant information and more and more when you get pregnant and what's happening every step of the way. And they build this connection with you. They create a real relationship and they collect all the data. So the moment that the child is there, there's only one brand that pops in your head the type of products you need. And because of all the data they have, they know exactly what product is right for your child at what stage in his or her life. So a very clever way of expanding the journey. So what do we do with that within ABN EMRO? Well, of course, we also have a lot of data. We're not always allowed, it, allowed to, uh, to use it the way we would like to. Uh, but we try to, to use it in the best way, uh, and, and we're continu continuously looking for new ways to do that. So here you see some things that we already put live or are working, working on. How do we make sure that we give customers the insight on what's happening there? So not only showing your balance, but also is it increasing, decreasing, maybe some tips, how to make sure you make the most of your money, what do you still have left? Will it be suitable? Will it be enough? Uh, but also, since we have the data of all your peers as well, are you doing better than, for example, other students? Or worse, what's happening comparing to last month? Any advice that we can give? Really trying to create individual journeys and suggestions based on the data we have of you. Technology. We already a little bit touched upon that. Maybe you're aware, uh, familiar with the methodology of design thinking. This is where it all comes together. So you really think from a customer's point of view, what are the problems they're facing? What are the needs they're having? Combining that with your business view, where do you stand for? What are your goals? And technology, what is possible there? And when you combine those three, you really have a sweet spot of innovation. A nice example there, I think, is Philips who, of course, want to sell as many toothbrushes, or as many products in general, but this is about regarding uh, toothbrushes, and uh, saw for their customers, especially parents, that kids don't brush their teeth as often as they should. So they thought, well, we have, of course, Internet of Things and all kinds of technologies like that. Can we make it more like a game? So years ago, they introduced an app with this nice cartoon called Sparkly, and whenever you start brushing, Sparkly will yeah, help your kids Okay, now you should do, go do uh, upper left, upper right, two minutes down, and get all these instructions to your child, making sure that he or she brushes correctly. But it's a game, so whenever you do it correctly, they will get a nice uh, hat or nice clothes for that, that sparkly cartoon. 
So you use the technology to yeah, really change behavior and that way uh, make it easier to, sell you to brush your uh, teeth and of course sell more tooth uh, toothbrushes. Another example, and Marriott was one of the first, or actually Starwood, which is now part of Marriott, was one of the first hotel chains that does this. Also thinking about, okay, what are some of the yeah, frustrations you have when you travel? And probably you recognize this, especially when you travel for businesses. Everybody arrives at the hotel more or less at the same time, needs to check in, so you need to queue. Everybody sleeps, in the morning you wake up, everybody checks out at the same time, another queue. So they thought, first of all, we use technology to make sure people can already check in at home, use their mobile phone to check in in the room, so no need to queue anymore, it's faster. However, by doing that, they also created new touch points. Because firstly, there was only the contact when you were really at the counter to check in, but now you already do this at home. So the journey starts earlier, they already have a chance to connect with you, give you suggestions what to do or arrange a taxi. So they also lengthened the journey by this and created more connection with the customer and yeah, more uh, uh, marketing chances as well. So this is a vision how we look at this from ABN AMRO. Uh, what we would li love to have in the future, and we're, we don't have this today to be honest, but is also making sure that we use all the technology po possibilities to be there, be relevant at relevant moments for the customer, whatever device there su suits them best. So one thing we're thinking of is, okay, wouldn't it be nice that if you were looking for a house, and of course we know that because, well, you have d uh, discussions with us regarding your mortgage and you want to know what is possible. So we know you're in the market for a house and we know what kind of house you want. Wouldn't it be nice that whenever you walk across the street and you walk across a house that we think would be suitable for you, that you get an automatically pop up from ABN AMRO, hey, this is a house that might suit your needs and it's affordable for you. Uh, and then you go to your internet banking environment or you do it at the app and there you already see more information about the house. We don't provide it, but Funda does already, so we can just use that information. But we know all your financial details, so we can already say to you, if you would buy this house, this is what it would cost you monthly. You can still do this, you will even have some money, spare money to buy a car as well or not. So we can really combine all the data we have with the goal of the customer at that time. Well, that's the future, but things we are doing already today, and maybe you've seen this, is of course we need to always ask for the, incent, uh, the consent, because yeah, uh, yeah, we cannot use all the data otherwise, but People are more and more willing to share the data if you uh, know how it's used and if it's beneficial for yourself. So one of the things, one of the new features in the app uh, is this, all your subscriptions. We know that you pay about 10 euro every month to Netflix. We know that you have a subscri subscription, so we can show it to you. And then all of a sudden you see, okay, I have a subscription for Netflix, but also Disney, Amazon, HBO. Do I really need all these different streaming uh, uh, partners? So we give insights to the customer, but at the same time, you can also easily click on it and unsubscribe. So we also make it easy for them to yeah, manage their financials in a better way. Last but not least, the employees. Well, that's what I already started with as well. As well. Within ABN AMRO, customer experience is not a project. Uh, well, it is a kind of function, it's my function, but everybody within the organization briefs customer experience because it's such an important part of our strategy. And you really need it. Everybody needs to have a customer experiences in their DNA. Every day to think about how can I improve what I am doing for the customer. And every customer there. Sometimes people say, okay, yes, but I only work at finance and uh, yeah, but still what you are doing in the end will impact the customer, the way that within ABN AMRO we talk about risks, for example, and we talk a lot about risks, uh, is influencing in the end the experience the customer will have. So if already these people will not only think about risk and regulation, but really from a customer point of view, what's their goal in life and how can we support that, you will get a completely different experience at the end. So every employee should be willing to think about from a customer's point of view and see how they can make a difference in that. So one example there, which I always love, is Geek Squad. They are there to support you in the US whenever you have problems with your computer or your iPad. And they're a squad, just like police. So they're dressed in the same way. They have a little small book or an app 
where they have small rules, like for example, uh, my job is only finished when the customer is completely satisfied. So everybody keeps being reminded on, okay, we're really here for the customer. Uh, they always take off their shoes. It's a small thing, but it's very consistent and it makes a difference for the customers. And they have what they call the motherboard of shame. Whenever you don't do something right for the customer, you really get a motherboard and they take a picture and well, just like this guy here, everybody knows that you could have done things better for the customer. A little bit American way, maybe. But we do the same with an ABN MRO in a more Dutch way, maybe. So we also thought about how can we make sure that our employees also feel part of that, this experience and part of this brand. So this, when you started for ABN MRO, and uh, when I started at there six years ago, this is the contract you get. So you're all excited about your new job and uh, very much looking forward to starting there, and you get the contract, which is like, well, small letters, and it's more like a terms and conditions, than really, okay, we're looking forward to this. So we started that. And as already mentioned, our new positioning is about being expert, helping people forward. So we start with, you are our new expert. Welcome on board. Nice to have you here. This is what we have agreed on. So it's more like, yeah, more fun, and you really get excited to work there instead of, oh, well, this is what I'm going to sign up for. So small things to make sure every, em every employee feels part of the brand and, yeah, we all have the same DNA. To wrap it up, four success factors and really think about how can I apply this to my own business? How do I stand out? Where do we stand for as a brand? And how can I make sure that people feel this when they uh, have uh, contact with us? How can I use the data we have to create individual journeys, really make it hyper-personal? How can I use all this technology that is happening today? How can I use this not only beneficial for the company, but especially beneficial for the customer? And how can I use, make use of all these employees that I have within my company, make them sure that they understand what the brand is for and how can they uh, contribute to a better customer experience? If you have any questions, this is my email address or find me on LinkedIn and I also walk around. But uh, thank you for listening and have a nice day today.